Hey guys, do you know someone considering renting their property as an Airbnb? I have worked with Rental Advisor for over a decade, and Rental Advisor provides free rental projections to prospective owners, realtors, and investors for any property in the US. So if you know someone considering getting into the vacation rental industry, have them email management at myrentaladvisor.com to get their free revenue projections. So a couple of years ago, I released a video response to John DeLynn's claim that the church is harmful. I wanted to re-release it now that I have more viewers because it's not really about John, but about the many people like him. It's one thing to claim the church is not true, but to claim the church is harmful, honestly, it's just an absurd claim. I hope you enjoy this video. So a lot of time is spent by people wondering if the church is true, or in other words, if the church is what you know it claims to be. However, let's imagine in a Christian context for a moment that there is no such thing as a true church. In other words, the denomination you choose to participate in is essentially just a matter of preference. One might ask, what does Jesus think of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? Do you see how this is a different question? It's more a question about, is the church good, rather than, is it true? So, if, you're a, if you are a Christian who doesn't believe there is a true church, then really the ultimate question is if the church is good. Is it the church that you believe brings you closer to Jesus Christ? Now, John DeLynn, the founder of the very popular Mormon Stories podcast, recently released a video with his emphatic belief and case that the church not only isn't true, it's not good either. As long as the Mormon church claims to be the one true church on the earth, as long as the Mormon church is harming so many individuals and so many families, it is not simply good enough for us to say, ah, it's okay, the church provides a good way to live. The church is a great place to raise your family. But before we get into some of his distortions, I think one of the first things that John misses is that as members of the Church of Christ, our primary concern is with following Jesus Christ. Remember, John is not a Christian. We all have positive feelings about Jesus, but it's actually, the atonement is actually an insidious doctrine because it's all based on a deficit model of your brokenness and right. you needing someone to, to make you clean and to make you whole. And that is his fundamental problem. He thinks that he's railing against Mormonism when he really is arguing against ideas rooted in the Bible and Christianity more generally. What I want to call attention to in this video is that pretty much everyone who joins the Mormon church, whether it's a kid or a youth that's born in the church, or whether it's an adult that converts to Mormonism, they are all converted to the Mormon church based on the claim that it's the one true church on the earth, not merely on the fact that it's good or just a good way to raise your family. For example, the notion of a true church comes from the notions of special authority being given to special servants, and that actually comes from the Bible. It's the Bible that shows Jesus speaking to his apostle Peter, saying, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. What is a Christian to do with this? Well, it's precisely the oldest traditions in Christendom, namely the Catholic and Orthodox, for example, that are solidly built on the notion of there being a true church with saving ordinances. After all, it was Jesus in the Bible who said that baptism was needed to enter his kingdom. And it's not very hard to connect the notion of authority with the person with authority needs to be the one doing the baptizing. They're taught that only Mormon baptisms count in heaven. John seems to forget that we are Christians, and unlike him, we are committed not to the Jesus of our imaginations, but the Jesus witnessed to and testified of by special witnesses, including those who are in the Bible. If you claim that the Mormon church is true, you better be right, and you better be able to prove it. Just the fact that he says we need to prove that the church is true demonstrates his lack of sophistication in matters of epistemology and Christian thought. And why does he insist that we use his standard of proof? Well, because he claims that following Jesus Christ, 
as talked about in the Bible and in general Christian tradition, hurts people, and that Jesus requires too much sacrifice of those who follow him. Mormon youth are taught that they need to dedicate two years of their lives to serving a mission, delaying their education. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. You're taught that you should get married immediately, as fast as you can, and have as many kids as you possibly can. When to have a child and how many children to have are private decisions to be made between a husband and wife and the Lord. Mormon youth are taught that premarital sex is next to murder in terms of sin. Mormons are taught that being gay or lesbian or bisexual or transgender is evil in the eyes of God. Someone who is adhering to the norm of chastity, though they may be dealing with same-sex attraction, really there's no reason they cannot be fully participative. They can't be a full-fledged member of the church. They're taught that for the most part, women should not pursue their education too far or make too many plans about their career. You must get all the education that you possibly can. Sacrifice anything that is needed to be sacrificed to qualify yourselves to do the work of this world. Train your minds and hands to become an influence for good as you go forward with your lives. Because their most important job is to stay home and be mothers and wives. Mormon children, youth, and adults are taught that they should give 10% of their income for the rest of their lives to the church. And that no matter what, you should always raise your children in the church to believe as faithful Mormons. Is he totally unaware of the immense good the church does? Is he totally unaware that according to Gallup polling, religious people are happier than non-religious people and Latter-day Saints are the happiest group of religious people in the world? Is he totally unaware that researchers at places like Penn State and others have found that Latter-day Saints are exceptionally high in pro-social behavior and are model citizens and contributors to the communities where we reside? Is he totally unaware that unlike many religions, it is those of the Latter-day Saints that are the highest educated who also tend to be the most active in their faith? Is he totally unaware that Provo, Utah was voted the happiest city in America? There are a lot of dark and dangerous places in the world, but communities where high numbers of Latter-day Saints reside, like Laie, Hawaii, Gilbert, Arizona, and Orem, Utah, are not those places. In fact, when there are social pathologies in Utah, look at the breakdowns by county. What you'll find is that nearly always you'll see that the problems are worse in the quickly secularizing Salt Lake area rather than Utah County, which retains the highest numbers of active members of the church. No, the saints are not perfect and all is not well in Zion. But when you look at the data and compare us to other groups of people, John's claims about church activity being so bad for people quickly falls apart. It is also true that there are many individuals and many families that are irreparably harmed by their participation in the Mormon church. This list includes youth who are tormented and sometimes scarred for life due to the guilt and the shame that they experience as teenagers around matters of normative sexuality. I'm sitting here wondering, whose norms does he think we should follow? Does he really think that modern sexual norms are better than Christian sexual norms? Does he realize that Mormons did not invent the law of chastity? Again, he seems to forget that the church is not about following the whims of popular society of the moment when it comes to sexual matters. We're trying to follow the teachings of Jesus Christ. He also mentions the great evil of having women put their family before their career. Girls, young women, and women who decide not to pursue certain levels of education or not to pursue certain careers because they're taught that their primary goal and their primary mission in life is to get married. Yeah, we do believe that family comes before career, and that doesn't just go for women either. Is he seriously implying that there is something more important in life than family? He then goes on to exaggerate, claiming that women are told to simply marry fast and have as many babies as possible. When in reality, the church manual explicitly states, and I quote, 
The decision about how many children to have and when to have them is extremely personal and private. It should be left between the couple and the Lord. The church members should not judge one another in this matter. Also, I will not apologize because my wife and myself, like most human couples in human history, have found that uh, in our family, she is more inclined to take the lead with the kids during the day while I take the lead on bringing in a family income. This demonization of women, like my wife and my mother, who chose this arrangement is disgusting. Also, since when is being home with your children, instead of putting them in a daycare, a Mormon thing? It's not. While the church does encourage women to put the care of children above career, we also have an official world proclamation that states that men and women are equal partners and that roles are flexible based on familial circumstance. He also may want to refer to a recent study about all these oppressed LDS women that actually said, and I quote, Latter-day Saint women are overall happier about their pregnancies, have roughly one more child per family, breastfeed more often than their peers, and among LDS members, women are better educated, marriages are slightly less likely to end in divorce, and members are less likely to die from heart disease or cancer overall than their peers. This list includes young Mormon couples that get married way too soon, way too fast, after barely knowing each other, having way too many kids way too soon, and then they find out later that the church isn't what they thought it was. Or they find out that they're fundamentally incompatible. And by that point, it's far too late, and many of these decisions are totally irreversible. Also, while he rants about divorce, he seems to forget that the divorce rate amongst Latter-day Saints is lower than the national average. Further, by being an active temple married member, you cut your chance of divorce in half. Has he ever considered that perhaps the temple standards act as a great way to test compatibility and commitment in matters of worldview and morality, two things that can rip apart marriages? Perhaps beyond the religious significance, the temple standards actually help people find a compatible partner. But no, he doesn't think about that because that would go against his agenda. Also, despite all his whining about the saints who get married young, he seems to forget that studies show conclusively that divorce probabilities actually increase once you get married in your 30s. So for him to pretend that the church drives divorce when the data literally shows the opposite is honestly kind of embarrassing. This list includes Mormons of color, African Americans, Africans, Latin Americans, Pacific Islanders, Hispanics, who grow up because of the messages in the Book of Mormon and the Book of Abraham and because of past statements by Mormon leaders. They grow up thinking that their dark skin is ugly. I mean, really, is he living in 1872? Has he read anything from the church in, on race in the past 20 years? Does he realize that we've completely disavowed all of those teachings from the past that were actually racist? It's nonsense. And then, of course, he lies about gay people. This list includes gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender Mormons who grow up believing that their very nature is sinful and dirty and wrong. They he says that the church teaches that being gay in and of itself is evil. We don't teach that. We, like nearly every other major Christian denomination, simply teach that sex is only to exist within a male-female marriage. Because, well, that's what Jesus taught. That's what the Bible taught. He also seems to think that there's no way Jesus could have expected celibacy. And wrong. They grow up believing that who they choose to love and who they choose to spend the rest of their lives with is wrong. Many of them choose lives of celibacy that are incredibly harmful. Yet, we find in the Bible, Jesus saying this, and I quote, For there are eunuchs who were born that way, and there are eunuchs who have been made eunuchs by others. And there are those who choose to live like eunuchs, in other words, chaste lives, for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. The one who can accept this should accept it. So yeah, Jesus expected those who could accept to live a celibate life for the sake of the kingdom of heaven to do so. Again, it seems like John's beef isn't really with the church, it's with Jesus. 
Also, he rails against those who choose to enter a mixed orientation marriage. Others choose to enter into mixed orientation marriages that are also proven to be incredibly unhealthy with very high rates of divorce. Now, it should be noted, this is something that the church explicitly has not encouraged. This may not be the best choice for everyone, so the church wisely leaves it up to the individuals to decide. But seriously, to tell my friend Timber that getting married and having his beautiful children was a mistake is disgusting. The irony of him tacitly shaming my friend Timber for his lifestyle as if it's not authentic because he chose to marry and have children is appalling. Timber's choice may not be the right choice for most gay people, but when Timber holds his babies in his arms, maybe I should look at him and remind him of how bad his decision was to get married. Because, after all, it could end in a divorce. And that never happens to straight couples. Give me a break. He then goes on to lie about suicides among gay members of the church. All of these complicating factors help to explain why LGBTQ suicide rates within Mormonism are egregiously high and totally unacceptable. And honestly, people who promote the truthfulness of Mormonism at the expense of LGBTQ youth and adults are probably somehow complicit in the harm that's being caused to this population. Or perhaps he is just unaware that Utah's lead researcher on this subject, also a former uh, member of the church who is gay, that he stated that while people might think that the church's teachings are driving suicide amongst gays, there is no data to support that, period. And that's a quote. Or, and I quote, the data show that the more religious you are on average, the fewer, mentor, the fewer mental health problems you have and the lower your chances of suicide. John says it's fundamentally immoral to lead people into the church under false pretenses. It is fundamentally immoral to lead someone into such a high demand, high expectation, potentially harmful religious system if they are led there under false pretenses. Yeah, but that's just a fancy way of saying you shouldn't lie to people. But the reality is, is that many people in the church may not be sure if the church is true, but they are sure that the church is good. And there is nothing wrong with those people inviting others to come and see for themselves and to make up their own minds as to the value the church can have in their life. The reality is that John is not a serious critic, but he is a popular one. And this is because he's charismatic. He knows exactly what to say to your disaffected member of the church. He hides his deep-seated resentments behind opening prayers and primary songs that open his speeches. But don't let this facade blind you. His passion is fueled by resentment, not an objective analysis of the facts and data. Oh, so Joseph wanted to find truth. Are members of your church still allowed to do that? Because I was just trying to find truth and teach people about truth, and they excommunicated me. He is a propagandist. You see, most people in the world, unlike John DeLynn, see the church as something good, but they just don't believe in it. And that's perfectly reasonable. What is not reasonable is to see the church as some force that is so bad in the world that it must consume your life's work. Really? With all the problems in the world, with all the injustice, you, John DeLynn, are focusing your attacks on the religion that, according to data, seems to make people the happiest and whose biggest affront to the world is a Relief Society president dropping by unannounced with a casserole and an invite to the next activity. That sort of strange obsession can only be driven by something pathological. It does not take much imagination to see that what is driving John is a deep sense of hurt from the loss of his own faith. It's what drives many people in his circumstances. If John and his followers could embrace the Christian value of real forgiveness, which is to let go of that resentment, he would not only go on to find greater peace in his life, he could become a believable critic, or perhaps someone who finds better outlets for his need to fight injustice. So do you enjoy the content here on Thoughtful Faith? If so, be sure to hit the notification bell. This ensures that our new videos show up on your feed. Also, be sure to check out our Facebook group called Thoughtful Saints. 
where myself and others discuss the sorts of topics found on this channel. And lastly, if you think other people would benefit from this video, please be sure to share it.